So the Dominican Chargers have won the CACC Women's Championship, and it is now time to determine who will win the men's championship. It's the number one team in the South, Jefferson University, the host team of the tournament, taking on the number one team in the North, Caldwell University Cougars. Wow, should be a tremendous game this afternoon here to close this weekend of incredible basketball here on the campus of Jefferson University. Hello, everybody. Tim Jimenez and uh, Mike Andrewson. And here we are for the I, final game, Mike. I, I think we got what everybody wanted, with the exception of the people from Bloomfield. I have to apologize. Sure. But the number one team in the north, the number one team in the south, it's a heavyweight fight. It, it really is. It's going to be the fact that they took this game to 90, 95, 97 in the regular season at right. the Newman Center on the campus of Caldwell University. I'm sure Jerry Milani will be making quite mention of that on the sideline. He was at the call for that game. Uh, it just big players making big time plays. There's a lot of star power on that floor, and it's kind of what you would expect to have. So I'm, I'm looking excited. I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that was just a, a wild game. Uh, just an incredible finish there. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we, we we talk about that, we're going to talk about how these teams got to where they are. Uh, what happened yesterday? Uh, first, uh, we're going to start off with the Rams here, Mike. Uh, surviving in overtime, the late game last Ooh. night against uh, Bloomfield by one point, and they were a shot away from losing that one. Uh, it's, uh, Josh Morris played one heck of a game for Bloomfield on both ends of the court. Uh, Jefferson got into a little foul trouble. That seemed to be the theme of the evening on in both the both the games, the five o'clock game and the seven o'clock game, with three players fouling out for Jefferson. Uh, foul trouble put the Cougars in a little bit of a delicate situation on how they were going to manage Derek Bueno's time. Right. But it, everybody just goes to show you, everybody on that bench will prove to be important in what these teams do. We saw players come out. Reagan hit some big free throws for Chestnut Hill yesterday. Uh, we had who played uh, Hawkins, I think played some big minutes. McGregor played some big minutes for Jefferson. It, it's the players that are Maybe seven, eight, nine down on the depth chart that are a part of the team, and you're going to be expected to play. Yeah, because you never know what happens. And for the Rams, they lost three starters. They had them foul out. You had your CACC Player of the Year in Eric Timko. You had uh, an all uh, third team selection in Kem King. You had Biz Nasaya also foul out. All three fouled out. So finishing the game for Jefferson in a lineup, yeah. I'm not sure how often this lineup has been together on the floor, not in the regular season, honestly. Or are they uh, running practice with that lineup? Well, I'm think? sure in practice. Well, maybe in practice. Now they are. Yeah, now they are. <laughs> Jason Shields, Justin Hawkins, Darius Kennel in overtime. Uh, unbelievable uh, going out there. And, and they all pulled together with a win. Ahmed Barbabe was tremendous as well. And Hakeem Bird uh, stayed out there. Uh, those are the two starters who, who happened to not foul out. Uh, and, and again, you mentioned they survived. Jeff Morris, who was just phenomenal down the stretch, hit all those foul shots. And one thing the Rams uh, look out for here, uh, they, they struggled from the free throw line yesterday, yes. Jefferson did. Yes, they did. 13 to 21. Not exactly where they sit for a, for a season. I'm sure that it'll be, I mean, the more you talk about missing and making free throws, does that kind of get into your head as an athlete? I go, oh my God, I got to make more free throws. I got to make more free throws. Or do you just kind of make light of it and say, you know what, take care of your game, pay attention to what you're doing? You can't tell people, it's like, I'm telling you to make a three foot putt in golf. <laughs> you got to make that three foot putt. Oh, oh, no, no. There's no such thing as a routine putt for me. Ah, but. <laughs> but you're right, the, the free throws, man. It, it, becomes there, it becomes something that just festers inside of you. You get to the line, I got to make this, I got to make this. And all hell breaks loose, and you lose your form. And and, and when the stakes are high, like oh. we have today, the yes. CACC championship on the line. Uh, so that's Jefferson's story again. Uh, recovering from that, the three starters fouled out. Now uh, I'm interested to know if if maybe that kind of that load management type thing, where the three <laughs> starters fouled out, so they have their legs under them a little bit more than they would, you know, otherwise. I that's don't know. True. We got out of here like 9:30, 9:40 yeah. last night. 
So you figure the athletes from the Rams, you, you get changed, you go home, you relax a little bit, you probably don't fall asleep right away, you probably take a while to decompress, get something to eat, and you wake up the next morning and you gotta strap it on and, you know, the Caldwell team played the earlier game at five, so yep. they were right here down below us, you know, watching the first half with their food. Got a chance to, you know, get into a little bit of a normal game night, you know, post-game activity, which when you think about this tournament, it's always in the back of my brain. I never know how the athletes are going to react in the late game. Right. Because you don't know, you know, are you in your normal routine? When are you eating? When are you going to sleep? You know, how do you feel the recovery the next day? What if you need treatment? And a late overtime game. And a so, late overtime game. Yes. So that's right. Jefferson. Uh, Caldwell defeating Chestnut Hill yesterday, 67-65. to 65. Mike, what are your takeaways from there? Kirk Parsons uh, hit some monster Parsons. foul shots there. It was, a great, it was a great birthday for Kirk, yeah. as we heard Dean Johnson say it. Parsons hit the two big free throws at the end. He hit a big three-pointer at the 131 mark to go up 63-61. You need, we saw it in the first game, we need players to come up in a championship final to do things to put your team over the top. Because we all know that that Evans and uh, Rancy are gonna play, are gonna play and are gonna take this game. Heber's gonna play up to that top shelf level in the conference. Who else is coming around him? You know, a lot of people talk about Derek Bueno. He had 17 points in that game. He he gives you a tough matchup in the low, in the low box because he's crafty enough where he can get into a good shooting position. Good from the free throw line, you heard me say that. It, it'll be interesting to see what kind of time and what kind of production the Cougars get out of some of their bigger guys. Uh, Landon Shivers started the game yesterday. Musa Nagome, Daniel Botang, all played quality minutes for Coach Dean Johnson. You know, hats off to those guys. They kept the game where they needed to be when they didn't have their best stuff. And I got to talk about Derek Bueno, and, and he's been fun to watch. And, and again, he didn't get as much time in that first half because of the fouls. Yes. But that second half, he was a difference maker. And the last time uh, that he squared up against this Jefferson team, he put up incredible numbers. He's a He played in big time games as a high schooler, Roselle Catholic. Uh, you, you heard him in a post game interview afterwards. He goes, you know, we, we live for these moments. We want to play in these moments. I got I to gotta, gotta have it for my team, you know, we expect to be here. Coach Johnson said the same thing. Our guys expect to be in this situation. So I am not surprised that we can compete and we can produce. You build that positivity in the room. Yep. And, uh, you know, Evans uh, with, hit that game-winning shot against Jefferson, right? Was it Evans yes. with that layup? He drove it from end to end. You're going to wow. hear Jerry talk about it today. You <laughs> are. I mean, my goodness, uh, 30 points, six rebounds last time he played Jefferson. Bueno, we talk about those monster numbers, 27 points, 19 rebounds, seven on the offensive end. Talking to Coach Riley for Jefferson earlier, a lot of eyes are going to be on Derek Bueno, and I'm, gonna, I'm interested to see that matchup, Cam King and Bueno, kind of those powerhouses going out in the, in the paint there. You think they're going right at each other, or you think they're going to try to play it off a little bit? Does Rancy come into the play? Of course there's Rancy, yes. And, and, and Coach Riley's concerned about Rancy as well. He is that difference maker on the inside. Uh, you know, you have Timko going up against a defense like that where you have Rancy. That'll be interesting to see that matchup as well. Because Bueno's an off-the-bench kind of guy. Right. Or he has been this year. So it'll be interesting to see. But he's a matchup problem. Yes, I, yeah, no absolutely. doubt about it. He is a, he's a big body underneath that knows how to produce points. That's it again. Number one team south in the north. Jefferson taking on Caldwell. Going to be a fun one here to wrap up the CACC Championship weekend. And now we're going to head over to our desk play-by-play -play desk, Andrew Byrne on the call, along with Ben J.R. Donnell, the CACC analyst. J.R., it's great to be back up here. One more spot of the NCAA tournament on the line. You just heard our studio analyst mention it's number one in the North, Caldwell, and number one in the South, Jefferson. Let's first talk just a little bit about Eric Timko, the player of the year in the CACC. He had a big night last night, but he dealt with foul trouble. Would you expect Caldwell might do what Bloomfield did and try to get him into foul trouble early today? Well, I think that you come into a game against a player like an Eric Timko, and I think 
if you if you try too much to game plan against him, you run the risk of allowing those other players, guys like Nasaya and Kem Kang and Barba Bay, to really have bigger games. I think Eric Timko is a great player, and he's going to get his 20 to 25 points. What the Cougars need to do, I think, is I think they need to control the paint. I think they the, the team whose big men today, the team that those guys play well, that's the team that's going to win the basketball game. So I look at guys like Derek Bueno, Jarnell Rancy, Landon Shivers, and then conversely, Bismarck, Nasai, and Anton and Kem King. You know, those guys today, those battles today, are really gonna determine, in my opinion, the outcome. I think Dean Johnson and his staff have to get this game going up and down. If this is a half court game exclusively, that's not the tempo that best serves them. But they have so many weapons on that Caldwell team. And you know, a guy like Kirk Parsons, who people don't talk about a lot, he was the difference yesterday, him and Derek Bueno. Today also pits a couple of first year head coaches who waited their turn as assistant coaches. Mark Carino, the longtime head coach at Caldwell. Now Dean Johnson is the newly minted CACC coach of the year. Herb McGee at Jefferson, and now it's first year head coach Jimmy Riley. This is gonna be a fun one for the spot of the NCAA tournament on the line. Yeah, and I think the that storyline that you just mentioned really is a fun one. You have two guys that are, you know, first year head coaches, but they are clearly not first year head coaches. They've been with this with their respective programs for such a long time that you know they they are unlike you know what a what a, a typical first year head coach would be we send it over to the public address announcer for the introduction of our starting lineups now let's meet the starting lineups for jefferson and caldwell this afternoon at forward for jefferson a 6-9 junior from france number 22 antonin kem king at forward for Caldwell, a 6'8 sophomore from Middle Island, New York, number 13, Jarnell Rancy. At forward for Jefferson, a 6'6 sophomore from the Bronx, number 35, Bismarck Nisaya. At forward for Caldwell, a 6'9 freshman from Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey, number 33, Landon Shivers. At guard for Jefferson, a 5'10 junior from Philadelphia, number three, Hakeem Bird. At guard for Caldwell, a six-foot freshman from Deer Park, New York, number one, Darnell Evans. At guard for Jefferson, a 6'3 sophomore from Piscataway, New Jersey, number 12, Ahmed Barba Bay. At guard for Caldwell, a 6'1 sophomore from Patterson, New Jersey, number three, Mark Heber. At guard for Jefferson, a 6'4 sophomore from Audubon, Pennsylvania, number 20, Eric Timko. And at guard for Caldwell, a six-foot freshman from Newark, New Jersey, number four, Kirk Parsons. The head coaches for Jefferson, Jimmy Riley in his first season. He's assisted by Ryan McGee, Randy Monroe, and Danny Brennan. And for Caldwell, it's Dean Johnson in his first season. He's assisted by Joe Scott, Ed Ryan, and Nick Del Tufo. Ladies and gentlemen, the NCAA Jefferson Athletics and CACC Encourage and promote good sports student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your call Moments away players. from the opening tip and partners, we get a look at the starting five first for Jefferson. Aside from Timko, who's going to be the key for the Rams? Again, I think it's Antonin Kemkang and Bismarck Nasai. I think the post players today really drive the bus for both teams, and it's a great matchup that we'll see with probably Nasaya guarding Jarnell Rancy and Kem Kang on Shivers. But we know that Derek Bueno will be in the game. But Mark Heber, Kirk Parsons, and Darnell Evans, boy, that's a great three-headed monster backcourt for the Cougars. The 2023 Men's Basketball Tournament Championship is underway as Evans misses inside. These clubs met during the regular season and partner if 
that game is any indication, regulation won't be enough to decide a winner today. Well, I mean, storied programs, both of them, as you see Kem King really get a, a nice, easy start to his day as he went right, out, right at Landon Shivers. Caldwell winning that meeting back on February 11th in overtime, 97-95. Parsons long on his three, strong rebound by Messiah. And you see the Jefferson post players able to control the backboards and a great move by Hakeem Bird. Good start for the Rams. The junior out of Philadelphia puts Jefferson in front by four. Good start for the top seed in the South. The only team in the South between the men and women to advance to the championship. Parsons blocked by Timko out of bounds. Boy, you see the versatility in that and the athleticism of Eric Timko. Watch him stay right with Kirk Parsons and not foul him the whole way and do a good job of blocking the shot. CACC Player of the Year coming up big with a defensive stop as we have our first foul of the afternoon. Well, the Caldwell guards are just so explosive and difficult guards. They're able to work off the bounce so effectively. Just underway, men's basketball championship. Parsons, a contested three that was blocked, but he stays with it. And Caldwell maintains possession with a shot clock at eight. Rancy in trouble. Three on the shot clock, forced to just flip it up, and it goes in. Boy, but you saw the great defense that Bismarck Messiah played on Rancy. Made that about as difficult a shot as he could give him, but credit Rancy for knocking it down. Timko hits the deck, can't keep the possession alive. Heber. Long rebound out to Evans. And the rookie of the year goes strong, and there Shivers missing underneath. Another look at the basket, and he puts it in, and he's fouled. Well, and that's great second and third effort by Landon Shivers. And that freshman, you know, was able to stay with it. He didn't get a lot of minutes yesterday, but he could be a, a big piece to the Caldwell puzzle today. You watch him right here, one rebound. Two rebounds, three rebounds before he gets the put back. Freshman from Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey, gives Caldwell their first lead. And after Jefferson opened on a four nothing spurt, Caldwell with the next five. Barba Bay. Guarded by Heber, here's Timko, curling for three, pleading for a foul, comes up short. And it's out of bounds, last touch by Jefferson. Well, Timko there was not in really good rhythm. Good job defensively by the Caldwell defense to force a difficult shot. Freshman Darnell Evans. 18.9 points per game coming into today. Rookie of the year, this though is Parsons. Right elbow jumper, splashes home. Uh, Kirk Parsons picking up where he left off from yesterday. He had a big game, knocked down the two big free throws at the end, made a bunch of threes. Terrific game for Kirk Parsons yesterday. Nasaya all the way to the cup, too strong. The tip by Kem King would not go, and Caldwell again looking to run. In open space, Evans! Maybe Nasaya tapped that off the backboard. In any case, Caldwell got a good look from three, but it's long, and it's Jefferson basketball. Well, and, and credit Caldwell, you know, they're going right at the bigs of Jefferson. You know, no fear from their guards going right at them. Heber and Parsons taking it right to the basket. What are you noticing over the last couple of minutes as Caldwell's gone on this 7-0 run? Well, I mean, they're just kind of getting a little more comfortable in the game as you see Kemp King really establish himself nicely in the lane. But Caldwell doing the things that they've done well all year, and that's attack the basket. And it results then in good inside-out play where they can shoot the ball from the perimeter. Puts a pin in that 7-0 Caldwell run. They lead by one. 
As we approach our first media timeout, Shivers. Heber, a step back jumper. No good, and only Jefferson underneath for the rebound. And Barba Bay really clearing that rebound. He plays bigger than his frame. A, a big guard that does things well on both ends of the floor. Timko struggling to get, to get off to start this game. Another short arm jump shot. Only his second shot attempt in the first five minutes of this game. One of the stars for Caldwell yesterday, Derek Bueno waiting his turn to check in. He's at the scorer's table. He was marvelous off the bench. Evans, great ball movement by Caldwell. Parsons misfires from distance. I like Rancy making the extra pass, giving Parsons that open look for the three. Ken King. The matchup tonight is with Shivers. It was with Morris yesterday. Now it's Messiah in the paint. Ramsey comes up with the block. And Kem King able to secure the rebound and he's headed to the free throw line, but he'll have to wait until after our first media timeout of the men's basketball championship between number one in the North Caldwell and number one in the South Jefferson. The Cougars have an early one point lead on the CACC Digital Network, powered by BTV. Discover you at Caldwell University. Choose from 29 nationally acclaimed undergraduate majors, including sport management and health professions. With exciting clubs and organizations and 14 NCAA athletic teams plus sprint football, Caldwell University's campus is a great place to meet new friends, explore career paths, and discover you. Visit caldwell.edu to learn more and apply now. Back inside Herb McGee Arena. Number one in the north, number one in the south. And it's Caldwell in front by one. And JR, you were talking a little bit about the defensive prowess from Caldwell. What have they done early against Timko? I think they've been physical with him. I think they're really pressing up on him not allowing him any space and really doing a good job when he puts the ball on the deck of coming off um, Barba Bay or Bird to try and not allow him to get to the basket. The foul right before the media timeout was on Shivers and so at the line is the junior from France, Antonin Kemking. Third team all CACC performer. Another strong season for number 22 in blue and he'll have another free throw attempt. He will be a very important person for us to be watching as this game progresses. What was so impressive about Jefferson yesterday and our sideline reporter who we will hear from later in this half, Jerry Milani kind of talked about yesterday with Coach. How about the fact that Jefferson had Timko foul out, Kem King foul out, and Nasaya foul out, and they still won the game. Yeah, it was a credit to their, their other players and really led by Ahmad Barber Bay. Evans way off target. Rancy with a putback attempt that falls off the side of the cup. Good defense there by Jefferson. Barbara Bay all the way and scores. Uh, this young man, kind of an unsung hero for this Jefferson club, Ahmad Barber Bay, really does it on both ends of the floor. Great backdoor look. Bueno hitting Evans in stride, and he lays it in. Well, and Barbara Bay really stepping out to try to deny Evans on the wing, got caught. Great backdoor cut by Darnell Evans and the good feed by Derek Bueno. Has the game up at nine. Timko going inside to Kem King with Shivers on the bench. Bueno draws the defensive assignment. Shot clock at five. Bird in trouble. Long three. Barbara Bay draws it. Wow, Barbara Bay kind of bailing the Rams out in that possession. Really good defense by Caldwell, especially Bueno on Kem King. Here is the aforementioned Bueno. 
unable to get it to go inside the paint. So strong is Derek Bueno, Andrew. That's a great matchup, him and Kem King. Bueno had 17 points yesterday. Nasaya can hit that shot and right on cue connects. Boy, and you know the unselfishness of Eric Timko going to the basket and going across his body to make that cross court pass to Nasaya for the open three. What a luxury it is to have a six foot six sophomore who's used to being inside that has added the three point shot to his arsenal as Bueno gets good positioning and lays it in. And a terrific pass by Jarnell Rancy. That high low look from Rancy to Bueno, that's, that's tough to defend for Jefferson. Bird slows it down. Evans is on him. Timko has been quiet thus far, but others have stepped up for Jefferson. Nasaya. Timko, and the extra to Barbara Bay is good. As the sophomore puts it home. A well, great job by Kirk Parsons defending Eric Timko, but Nasaya with a great finish there. Heber, the sophomore out of Patterson. His turn to shine from beyond the three-point line. Uh, Caldwell getting production from a lot of areas so far in the first nine minutes of this game. Heber averages just under 15 points per game. Both of these clubs won tough matchups yesterday, and how about Bueno taking the charge inside? Boy, Derek Bueno, another player just picking up where he left off yesterday. Watch him absorb the contact, and then do enough to get that charge against Antonin Kemkang as we go to the under-12 break. Jefferson has a three-point lead in JR, it's early barely played over eight minutes, but you kind of get the feel that you're watching a ping pong match or a boxing match. Each time one of these clubs goes on a little run, there's a response. Yeah, I think that, I mean, Andrew, these are the you know two best men's basketball teams in the conference, and they're, and they're each taking swings today, and they're both good enough to absorb the others swing, if you will, or punch, and then respond. And that's what you're seeing in the first eight and a half minutes of this game. A Caldwell bunch that at 20 and nine on the season has set a single season program record for wins in the NCAA era. That's from 2002. What a season for Caldwell. They are in the CACC championship game for the first time since the 2006-2007 season, which was the last time they won it all. They beat Goldie Beacom, Philadelphia U, and U Sciences en route to the men's basketball tournament title, and they find themselves with the basketball down three with 11.36 to play in the first half. Jefferson, 18 and 11 on the season. They last reached the conference final, the 2019-2020 season. They fell to Dominican. Bueno nearly lost it, keeps the possession alive, and after it's off Jefferson, the Cougars will have it with 15 on the shot clock. Well, nice job there by Anton and Kemkang, not allowing Derek Bueno to make his move to the basket. You see Timko keeping his hands in the passing lanes. The backdoor pass there hit Timko on his rear end, and he comes away with it. Timko nearly had his pocket picked by Melvin Evans. Uh, and Caldwell, what they're doing is they're running a lot of different guys against Timko. Now Evans right now doing a good job of staying right in front of him. Jason Shields is on for the first time for Jefferson. I know the freshman caught our attention with how cool and calm he was yesterday under pressure late in the game and in overtime. Hit, a, hit some big free throws down the stretch to secure the victory yesterday for the Rams. The Jefferson lead is five. Melvin Evans, well short. And now Bueno, little bit 
too much contact fighting for the loose ball. Well, but a good job by Caldwell to get Evans with a wide open three. Bueno just a little too aggressive there, trying to smack the ball away from Antonin Kemkang as he gets to go to the bench as Bismarck Messiah comes back on the floor. Kimko. Shields, Messiah, Bird, and Kinnell. The five on the floor for first year head coach Jimmy Riley. And the number one seed in the South, Messiah. This time, no good from beyond the three-point line. Another good defensive trip from Caldwell, really keeping the Rams on the perimeter. And they were one and done. Good job securing a defensive board. Plano, long two. Oh, and you see the young man from Palisades Park, New Jersey, stepping out, showing he can shoot the ball from the perimeter as well. Scored more than 1,000 points during his prep career at Roselle Catholic. And that, too, brings Caldwell to within three, and they get some fresh legs on the floor as Daniel Botang and Moose Nagam are off the bench for first-year head coach Dean Johnson, who was named the CACC Coach of the Year a couple of days ago. I like that Coach Johnson playing a lot of players here in the first half, keeping legs fresh. This is going to be a marathon today, not a sprint. Darnell Evans, a finger roll, plus a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. Well, you see Evans explode right by Hakeem Bird, and Timko, you know, kind of got caught. Do I step in and take the charge? Do I try to block the shot? And he was in between, and he picks up the blocking foul. Opportunity for the three-point play for Evans. Freshman out of Deer Park, New York. And this tournament final is deadlocked at 19. And give Caldwell a lot of credit. You know, Jefferson came out with a lot of energy, and they've been very steady, have been the Cougars, to get back to this game tied up. Timko has an opportunity to go to the free throw line, and let me ask you this, JR. A Jefferson club that thus far has watched Eric Timko record no points is in a 1919 game, speaking to the depth of this club. Well, and you know, they're getting solid minutes from not only the two bigs, Nasai and, and Kemkeng, but you know, Bird, Barba Bay, Kennel now. And the, what I like about the Cougar approach to guarding Eric Timko, very, very physical. He has gone to the floor a couple of times and I think even though he was able to get that back, back door cut, you know, a, a not flagrant aggressive foul um, by Melvin Evans, I mean, it's, it's a good approach by the Cougars staff in terms of how they're guarding Eric Timko. Timko picks up his first points at the line and Jefferson picks up a loose ball. Off the Caldwell turnover, aiming to increase a two point lead. Barba Bay, straight on three. Lansing ball off the front of the cup. How about Nasaya? The rebound. But the shot's not falling from distance for Timko. And Evans scooting his way down the floor to lay it in. Yeah, Eric Timko is really uncomfortable out on the floor offensively today. And I think a lot of it is due to the way that the Caldwell defense and now Melvin Evans is playing him. Stays out on the perimeter. Timko forced to give it up. The Caldwell defense aiming for a stop. Barba Bay with the shot clock winding down. Travels. And again, a really good defensive possession by the Cougars. Staying in front of their players. Hands in passing lanes, not allowing uncontested jump shots, and really doing a good job on post players, forcing Nasaya to pass the ball out of the post. Caldwell in possession. Bueno, Darnell Evans, Parsons, Heber, and Botang are the five on the floor for the white and red of Caldwell. Here is Botang. Connecting a three-pointer right in front of the Jefferson bench. Well, Mark Heber 
drew a lot of defenders when he put it on the deck and he finds Boateng wide open and Boateng knocks down a shot. Kim Go fouled as he was readying a pass and we have reached the under eight media timeout. Caldwell has a three point lead over Jefferson. It's 24 21. And for the first time this afternoon, we go down on the floor where our sideline reporter, Jerry Milani, is standing by. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Great call so far. Was in the huddle there with Coach Riley. And I, I feel like he just reflects, his team reflects just his attitude in the. In, in, their, in the huddle there. He just, he makes sure that guys understand what their assignments are and they can go out and do them. It's the kind of play that you see with them. And the, the Caldwell Huddle's a little more frenetic. Coach Ryan gets a chance to kind of get in, get a little encouraging words in. And then Coach is really understanding he wants to get Derek to get inside, get the ball more, demand the ball more. And he understands, this was after the eight, eight minute timeout or the 12 minute timeout, that Jefferson's great. They're going to hit some great shots. They're going to hit some tough shots. He wants them to keep making them hit the tough shots to be able to have them come back, and that's what happened in the last four minutes, guys. Jerry, great stuff as always. We will hear from him again at halftime when he catches up with both Coach Riley and Coach Johnson. And JR, 7.44 to play in the first half and kind of going the way we thought, a close one between the two top seeds in their respective divisions. Yeah, I think that, you know, both teams are are making their case today, but I think you really have to credit Caldwell today. They're defending, I think, extremely well um, and, and done a solid job on Eric Timko, but credit the other players from Jefferson for making shots and keeping this, you know, a, a more than competitive basketball game. The inbound pass was difficult for Ken King to handle down near the shoe tops. And off this turnover, Nasaya pinned that one against the backboard. Another rejection. Well, Bismarck Nasaya says, hey, Jarnell Rancy, I can block shots too, you know. Barba Bay in rhythm three, no good. Now that was a better possession for Jefferson. Ball went inside out and got Barba Bay a wide open look at three. But if you're Dean Johnson, you're going, hey, it's not Eric Timko beating us. Is Mark Nasaya with 41 blocks on the season coming into today. Botang, no good. Great offensive rebound by Heber on one of those 50-50 balls that came flying off the back of the rim. Heber launching for three. Got it. Uh, and that's a great possession for Mark Eber, and Coach Jimmy Riley has seen enough and wants to call a timeout. Caldwell connecting from downtown, and the lead grows to six for the Cougars. As we get another look, Caldwell has been on fire from beyond the three-point line this afternoon. Well, and there it was just like the Rams defense kind of fell asleep a little bit and allowed Mark Eber not only to, to catch on the wing, but a wide open look from three. And as you see, to your point, Andrew three for nine from deep are the Cougars while the Rams shooting two of seven and they've missed a bunch as of late. They hit their first couple of shots from deep and now they've started to struggle from distance have the Rams. A timeout from head coach Jimmy Riley trying to stop this surge. Caldwell has increased the cushion. Bird navigating his way in for a tough two. Well, that's a great job by Hakeem Bird out of the timeout to get a much needed bucket for the Rams. Evans, that's Darnell. Melvin is on the bench. Bueno nearly came away with the rebound. Instead, it's Timko and Jefferson. Probably not the shot Dean Johnson wanted there. Nasaya. The tip back from Ken King wouldn't go either. Boy, when the Caldwell team gets out on the break, led by Evans, they are so fast in transition. They put so much pressure on the opposing defense. Darnell Evans off a screen. Who knew that the banks are open in Philadelphia on a Sunday? Now they're 
excuse me, 40 uh, or 35 percent from the from the behind the line as Evans kisses one off the glass for three. The lead is seven. Timko contested jumper. Ken King. He displaced Bueno for that rebound. Wave off the putback. Well, first and foremost, you know, Timko really guarded strong. Another well-contested shot. Look at Parsons being so physical. And a good job by Bueno giving up his body. And Ken King has picked up his second. Fifth turnover of the afternoon. Wide open, Evans slicing up the Jefferson defense on a perfect pass from Bueno. Well, in the Jefferson defense, they're really extending to try to play out on the wing, and the backdoor cuts are flowing. Darnell Evans, though, JR whistled for the foul there, and that is two on number one in white. Well, and Hakeem Bird, strong move to the basket as he uh, really put a lot of pressure on Evans. And Bird, Bird has uh, made a layup and now uh, has an opportunity to make uh, two free throws in successive possessions for the Rams. Knocking down his free throw attempt. Is the junior from Philadelphia. Started his career at Marist. He was named to the all-rookie team. Then moved on to UMBC. And now he is at Jefferson. Rancy puts it in. Friendly roll off the iron. That's a good move by Jarnell Rancy. Kind of bullying his way to the basket. And then a solid finish. Does this feel like a dangerous part of the game right now for Jefferson? How about Ken King though? That is a tough basket through contact. And a big one, because I think you're right. I think we are in a critical stage here for Jefferson. They have to make sure that they stay in this game in the last four and a half minutes of the first half. Don't allow Caldwell to open up a big halftime lead. Ken King off the heel, but it still goes down the chute. He converts the hard earned three point play. Jefferson within six. Alongside J.R. Danello, I'm Andrew Bird. We thank you for joining us all weekend long. Bueno puts it in. Well, in a, in a possession of zone by Jefferson, and Caldwell did a really good job of recognizing high low for an easy basket by Derek Bueno. It feels almost like Bueno is kind of the unsung hero for Caldwell this weekend. You pay so much attention to Heber and Evans, but how about the work of Bueno for Caldwell? Bird hits the three. Well, I mean, it's, it's good defense by Caldwell, and Akeem Bird really stepping up and, and scoring the basketball for his team, keeping them alive in this game. Rancy. Back inside to Bueno. Oh, what a bounce pass to Rancy, who finishes it off. And you made a great point. What a terrific bounce pass by Derek Bueno, kind of threading the needle to join L. Rancy for the easy layup. The Cougars with a shade over three minutes to play of a seven point lead and they just committed a defensive foul on Timko. That is the seventh foul against Caldwell and we have reached our final media timeout of this first half with the number one seed in the North Cougars of Caldwell in front of the Rams of Jefferson by seven as we step aside on the CACC Digital Network powered by BTV.
inside Herb McGee Arena. The Cougars have a seven point lead over Jefferson. Aiming for their first CACC Men's Basketball Championship since the 2006-2007 season in JR. So far, so good for the Cougars. Yeah, they've done a lot of good things in the first 17 minutes today. Playing great defense on Eric Timko, getting quality play again from their bigs, Derek Bueno and Jarnell Rancy. Really pushing tempo from their guards. And it's a, it's a good first half of basketball for Dean Johnson's Cougars. Timko makes the front end of the one and one. He'll have another, but how about this? With 3.03 to play in the first half, the CACC Player of the Year has not made a field goal. All three of his points from the charity strike. Yeah, and every one of the shots that he's taken has been really closely guarded. He's 0 of 4 from the floor, and he's 0 of 2 from beyond the three-point line. Top 10 in the nation in scoring. Leads the CACC at nearly 23 points per game, but Caldwell thus far has made life tough for the sophomore. Melvin Evans, offensive foul. And that's where you see Timko, you know, he's such a complete basketball player. Watch him slide, get in front of Evans, absorb the contact, take the charge. You know, if you're not gonna score, you gotta do all the other things well, and Eric Timko is a complete basketball player. Following the turnover, Jefferson. A chance to get a bit closer. Here's Timko. Was trapped underneath. And he had the smarts to find Kittle, who drains the far corner three. And Jarnell Rancy was right there guarding Timko underneath. Timko knew he had to give it up. Parsons trying to will that one home. Here comes Messiah. Timko. Not yet from distance. Now you see he's trying to really get into the flow offensively. Probably was an ill-advised shot there. Down to a buck 50 in this first half. Heber off the heel, last touched by Barba Bay. It stays with Caldwell. And you know, give Derek Bueno credit, man. He's gonna go and wrestle this away from Barba Bay, and it's a good call. It is definitely off Barba Bay. Right on off his leg, and possession stays with Caldwell. Bueno, nearly triple teamed, and has it stolen away. Timko, tripped. You touched on this, JR. Caldwell has tried to be physical with Timko all afternoon. Yeah, anytime that there's, you know, a closely guarded play, they're, they're gonna put a body on him. And that time it was just inadvertent. But you know what? Eric Timko is really getting it from the Caldwell defense today. And the sophomore goes to the free throw line. A season ago, he was the rookie of the year in the conference. This year, the player of the year, and he hits the first. He can tie this game up. And he does, 38-38. And so Jefferson withstood that punch from Caldwell, and we are tied with 90 seconds to play in the first half. Well, and Hakeem Bird, you know, scored seven big points to get them back into shouting distance. And then they played really good defense. Caldwell has been stuck on 38 for uh, a few minutes. Parsons. Shot clock, bleeding. To three, Bueno inside, forced to just flip it up and it does not hit the rim, a shot clock violation. And that time, Messiah really did a wonderful job of staying, watch him stay right in front of Derek Bueno and didn't allow him to bully his way all the way to the rim. Good defense by Bismarck Messiah. A 7-0 spurt 
for Jefferson. And a chance to take a lead. Under a minute to play. First half, Barba Bay. Nasaya open. Three! Puts Jefferson in front. Well, and Nasaya catches it off a nice ball reversal from Barba Bay, but then he faked the pass, which created space for him to have a wide open jump shot. A 10-0 Jefferson run. Messiah's made a couple of three-pointers in this first half. As Kinnell commits the foul, but that is six on Jefferson. So not yet putting Caldwell at the line with 25.9 seconds left in this first half. Rams leading by three. And a holding foul against Jefferson and now Caldwell goes to the line. He was on Barba Bay and that's his second. You know, he, they, the officials felt that he just was holding Jarnell Rancy as he was making his cuts to the basket. Caldwell hasn't scored in nearly three minutes when Rancy made that lay-in. Now the junior out of Middle Island, New York, misses the front end. The drought continues. And Jefferson, with the shot clock turned off, likely to hold for a final look at the basket in his first half. They're surging. On a 10-0 run. Five seconds left, first half. Timko. Bluffs on the three, attacks the basket. He's met by Rancy, and the block ends the first half. But Jefferson picked it up over the last three and change. This game was 38-31. Caldwell, Jefferson flips the script late, and they lead Caldwell by three at 41-38. And Jerry Milani is standing by with first-year Jefferson head coach, Jimmy Riley. Jerry? Half. On your team. I'm serious. They're out working. They're out. But the bizarre is winning right now. Had he Eric has to start passing the ball. He's missed like four or five open kicks. That's he's going to drive. They're going to come. He's got to kick it. Coach Riley, I talked to him throughout the year. He is as honest with you as possible. Yes. He will get on his own guys. For being up 41-38. You know what he told me yesterday? He said, if we win the national championship, I will find something to be unhappy about. Yeah. You're a coach. Always yeah. looking to get better. You're a coach. You know that is. Now, always looking to get better. Yes. Up. That's what you want to challenge your guys to. Exactly. So the 10-0 run at the end of the half, you know, you heard Andrew say it was 31-38, yeah. and then all of a sudden, you know, JR had said, well, you know, this game could get away from from the Rams. And right. then all of a sudden, a couple of shots go in. You know, Cannell makes a big three-pointer. Tim Coe hits two from the free throw line. It's an entirely different story. Bismarck, Nasaya with a big three-pointer. Didn't know he had that range. He can shoot every once in a while. He'll stretch it out. Uh, but you're right. That was a critical juncture of that yes. first half. You think, okay, Caldwell could get into double digits, and oh. then you never know what might happen after that. It was a it was a grind out there. The Cougars, tough in your face defense. You know, Coach Johnson, make it tough on Jefferson to make those shots is what we picked up from Jerry when Jerry was watching in the huddle. You know, Ben not allowing uncontested shots. There's the story of your first half. The Caldwell defense kind of stifling the Caldwell offense went into the dumper in the last four or five minutes, but you know, you hope that they can come out of this, you know, with a little bit more vigor. Derek Bueno does what Derek Bueno does. Right. Uh, he's, his offensive game is, is really starting to ascend. It's a little more uh, self-belief in what he's doing out there and how he can produce. Same thing with Jarnell Rancy. I think his offensive game this season has started to excel or started to get better as the season has gone along. So that's a big, that's a huge plus for the Cougars. And Evans, it's your freshman of the year because he's going to score points and he's going to do it. Darnell Evans does. He's got 12 points. Scored in bunches, 12 points on a 5 of 10 shooting. Darnell Evans was. Had a five rebounds as well and an assist. Uh, so uh, Darnell Evans, a terrific 
uh, start there for Caldwell, the only player for the Cougars in double figures. And I think, you know, you, again, uh, you want everybody to kind of – you got to find out, get, find a way to get out of this offensive funk at the end. Uh, agreed, agreed. Uh, the Rams shooting 52% from the floor, which is an awfully nice number. You know, they shoot 48% on a season average. But they've got it going. They've, they've been tough. They were tough early. It seemed like they weren't missing shots at all in the early part of this game. Yep, Jefferson shooting 5 of 11 from beyond the arc. Again, they're out shooting Caldwell 52 to 43% here. Uh, free throw line, another big difference we're seeing out here. Jefferson getting the line a whole bunch more. 10 out of 11 from the stripe. Only 2 of 3 only for two, Caldwell. Only 2 of 3 for Caldwell. That's a really good point. You know, getting to the line is one thing, but then being able to convert is an entirely different story. Another part of the story in that first half, offensive rebounding here. Caldwell making Jefferson pay with that. Nine offensive rebounds compared to three, and they've been able to score off of that, uh, so that's been important. But it looks like Jefferson been able to cut into that points off a turnover difference a little bit here. But obviously offensive rebounding and, and, and having the amount of possessions, that's huge. So if you're Jefferson, you want to definitely do better at that. But if you're Caldwell, hey, get more of those offensive boards. That, that is that is so, so true. You know, people want to show – People have been reading about Jarnell Rancy all year. Yep. When you get into a game like this, you've got high-end players that, you know what, I am just as good as you. And you see a lot of that. You are not going to beat me. You are not going to block me. I'm going to take it there, and you're not going to stop me. And that's, you see that with Kem Kem. You see that with Bueno. You see that with Barbara Bay. Uh, Bismarck Desai is just turned into one of my favorite players to watch this weekend. Yeah, he's been fun. The guy's got range everywhere. Like Derek Bueno's turned into one of my favorite yeah. players to watch. I like these Jefferson Caldwell guys here switching players. Yes. Here, oh. They're incredible players. So it's been great to see these guys step up again. It should be a championship game, and it is. Exactly. And, and I think Coach Riley said uh, yesterday, it was a shame one of the teams had to lose uh, in that overtime game. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it'll be the same here because these two teams are playing really tough. Uh, when you look at the numbers here. And, and Jefferson, well, Hakeem Bird led the way with 11 points, did not miss a field goal, made his only three-point attempt as well, two of two from the free throw line, a couple of boards, a couple of assists. Eight points for Kem King on the inside. He didn't miss either from the field. No. Uh, two of three from the free throw line as well, three rebounds. Uh, Barba Bay, we've talked about Ahmed Barba Bay, seven mm -hmm. points there uh, early hitting those shots as we see him hit one deep there. Deep. Yeah, really oh. deep. Right in front of the Cougars bench, too. You know, it was interesting to hear Coach Riley say on the way out, you know, Caldwell is outworking us right now. Right. And that Timco needs to kick the ball, needs to drive and kick. Right. Because he didn't – I thought I saw Timco kind of go down in one of the first or two plays of the game. I thought his leg – his ankle was a little gimpy. I thought he was limping. I mean, I could be wrong. I'd have to go back and take a look at the video. But he just doesn't look – like he's in control like he usually is. Sure. Yeah, but, but, you know, credit the Caldwell defense for exactly kind of putting that icing on the cake as well. When you win the, the CACC Player of the Year, you're going to have the target on your back. Oh, and, yeah. And Caldwell <laughs> has done a terrific job on the defensive end. You know, you just make life difficult. Every Can you imagine every contact yep. that Eric Timko goes into, there's an elbow, there's a, there's a wrist, there's a shoulder into your chest, or there's, right. some, there's always some kind of... And we see Timco picking himself up off the floor a lot. That's just got to wear on you. But and all season, this is not just a today thing. This is yeah. all season long, Mike. And and he's flying around screens uh, and again it's going down because he's running mm -hmm. in, into guys. So it's a lot to handle for a top scorer. I think for any league. Yes. Uh, but proves how mentally tough the young man is. Yep. And they're, ha they're happy to have him here at Jefferson. I think anybody in this conference would be happy to have him. Absolutely. And I think they'd be. Coach Riley would be happier. Again, distribute the ball more. He wants to see out of Eric Timko. <laughs> 0 of 6 from the field, which is uh, not something you see every day. That is true. Uh, Darius Kittle coming off the bench with three points. Jason Shields, uh, who came up big yesterday uh, in overtime, he has not scored yet for Jefferson. And if you're called well, you know, Mike, uh, what are you looking to see here in the second half? How do you, well, how do you get at this scoring funk? Well, you want to run. Coach Johnson wants them to run, right? Absolutely. He wants to play a game in the 80s if he can. He would play 85-85 in a minute. But, you know, once you start to slog it down in the half-court offense here, eh, you, he played a lot of guys in the first half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys played. Yeah. I'm sure he's probably going to shorten that bench a little bit. 
Maybe Danielle Boateng doesn't see much floor time unless there's foul trouble. Same thing with Moose and Nagam. You got to try to find the right mix of the right players to get you over the finish line. But to see, you know, the great things about the playoff basketball, Boateng, you know, hit a hit a three point basket. Yeah, I, I looked at you like you were he pointing. Is, out he his, is not a three point shooter. You were pointing out his his percentage on the season. He's You're made like, thirteen on the year. That but, was a big number fourteen, I guess. And hey, <laughs> that's, that's great. That's the, the love seeing that stuff. And Jarno Rancy, and, and I think if you want to run here for Caldwell, Rancy only has one block shot. Correct. So, uh, you know, more of those, obviously, you're going to have some run out. So I think that's going to be part of it for Caldwell on the defensive end if you want to see some of that fast break that Coach Johnson wants to see. That's a good point. And we haven't seen either side pick up pressure off the inbound. Right. You know, whether it's three-quarter, whether it's a full-court press or some kind of trapping defense. I'm sure JR will make comments about that as we move into the second half because I think Caldwell might be a little bit faster with their guards. And we all know that March basketball is – guard oriented depending on or it doesn't depend on which division you're in in the NCAA you know when they get to the big dance in a couple weeks it's always about the guards right exactly it's always about the guards and uh, who will punch their ticket to the big dance that is going to be answered uh, when we get back here to the second half uh, we are about uh, uh, getting close about six minutes away and at some point soon uh, neither of the teams have come out actually as I say that out comes out Caldwell Caldwell coming out for their uh, shoot around here before we get going. Uh, we have to talk about the big dance. We haven't even mentioned it. I know. You know, the East region. What do you got? Oh, right now, Bentley, St. A's, Southern New Hampshire, New Haven, Pace, St. Thomas Aquinas, Dominican at 7, Damon at 8, Franklin Pierce at 9, Southern Connecticut State at 10. We all know that the winner of this gets the automatic qualifying spot. Uh, Dominican with that quarterfinal loss, they were sitting at 7. They're probably right on the bubble. It, it's going to be a challenge to see. I know that St. Ams was in the finals of the NA10. Bentley lost in the semifinal. Southern New Hampshire lost in the semifinal. I think the first five or first four or five are probably set. It's the always the bottom of the bracket that's going to cause everybody some grief. So we'll see uh, who, who comes out again. That all comes out later on tonight. Uh, when we'll find out where everybody will be. We'll find out who will be the CACC representative, and that should happen again at the end of this uh, second half. Maybe we'll need overtime. I don't know. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. We've had a few of those already. That's a big big topic of conversation back in, in the courtesy lounge is, you know, who's winning? What's the NE10 doing? You right. know, what's what's Stack doing and Damon and the ECC? Yeah, a lot so of we'll, have to, we'll have to see. Does, does, you see Jerry down there with... Looking. Coach Johnson yet? Uh, he's waiting uh, okay. here for Coach Johnson to come out. We can see him right by the scorer's table there, Jerry Milani, who will be talking to Coach Johnson at some point. But, uh, you know, last time these two teams met, again, that crazy final is a high, super high scoring. And, I yes. mean, we may get there, we may not get there to that 90s level. <laughs> but the way that ended, I mean, who knows? I mean, you just never know. That could happen here today. Hey, hey, put your seatbelt on. Oh, boy. Buckle up. You know it's going to get frantic. Yep. You know, people are going to be hoisting up threes. Exactly. And, and you know, who's you know will Tim Coe come out of this uh, shooting funk? Will he set up his teammates like Coach Riley wants to see? And Caldwell, again, they're coming. They they needed that half, honestly, because they were on a 10-0 run. Jefferson was uh, to, uh, to, to erase a Caldwell seven-point lead. So Caldwell needed this half to kind of reset. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of answers they will have. But Johnson has been a very grounded coach. He's not a lot of up and down. You're not going to see him throwing a lot of towels back there. He knows what his team is. They kind of they've been proving to their group that you guys know that we're built for this. You know, don't make the moment any bigger than what it is. Let's go out and produce. It's a basketball game. And we're going to head down to the sideline. Jerry Milani talking to Coach Dean Johnson. All right, Coach. Guys did a great job with Eric Timko. But then Bird and Barbara Bay kind of hurt you a little bit. How do you adjust? They don't they, they hurt us. They're good players. So, you know, they have a lot of options. And they, the reason they, they shoot the ball very well. So they have three or four options. And I think we're, we're making them work. They're making some threes. Uh, with defense, I'm happy with it. I mean, we got to do a little bit better job rebounding the ball because when, when, when you have good shooters, you can't give good shooters or a good team that has shooters second and third opportunities. So we just got to utilize that. Down here on the offensive end, we just, we just got a little out of whack for maybe a minute or two. 
And I don't think it was because Nutty was uh, on the bench. I just think we, we were a little timid. We got an offensive foul because we were indecisive. We took a little bad flip shot, you know. So we turned the ball over three or four times, held them to, you know, I think last yesterday we had 22, so now we got 38. So we're playing good. We're in a good rhythm. It's going to be a hell of a second half. You got a lot of guys in in the first half and got some contributions from a lot of guys. Are you going to try to do that the same in the second? Uh, I don't know. I will tell you this, that uh, the way we play, and in this side tournament, playing the overtime game last night, these media timeouts, big advantage for Jefferson, not for us, because we love to run, 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 and every four minutes you guys are stopping us with the media. But we'll, we'll adjust. We'll get through it. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Back up to you guys. Thanks so much, Jerry and JR. It was Jefferson that closed the half on a 10-0 run, and they weathered the storm from Caldwell and then went on a late surge. Caldwell hasn't scored in more than three minutes as we get ready for the second half. What did you see? Well, I just want to touch on uh, Dean Johnson's point there about the, you know, the media timeouts and the the stoppages and he makes a really good point you know Caldwell wants to keep the game going up and down and the media timeouts you know uh, albeit you know a part of the game do favor Jefferson in that regard and he's got to figure out a way to keep his guys with the pedal down on a on a consistent basis to to keep the tempo I think his point is so well taken I think Caldwell's playing much better today than they played yesterday in in the first half they're they're up against a good team who's got a lot of weapons they did a terrific job on eric timko in the first half and you know what good teams are going to have more than one player he's right his team has got to rebound the basketball effectively and be consistent on the offensive end moldens away from the start of the second half it is top seed in the south jefferson with a late surge to end the first half that finds themselves in front by three as we get look at Herb McGee who laid the foundation for Jefferson. Retired after last season when Jefferson lost early in the CACC tournament. And what did you make of first year head coach Jimmy Riley in that conversation with Jerry talking about the fact that he wanted to see Tim go pass the ball more. Well, I think because he understands that Caldwell is trying to do what they can to take him out of the game, and you have to stay in rhythm and do what you can to make the team better. You know, if you're being really closely guarded, make that extra pass. Here we go, the second half underway, and as you can see, bottom of your screen, it's Jefferson on a 10-0 run over the last three and change. Turned a seven point deficit into a three point lead. Bird off from distance and Rancy muscles the rebound away from Kem King. Now it looked like Caldwell might have played a little zone to come out in the second half there. And Darnell Evans, big three. Ties this game up. Caldwell breaks that scoring drought. Well, and they're back in man to man this possession. Timko did not hit a shot from the floor in the first half. And all of his damage at the free throw line. Kem King just tossed it up with the right hand. No good. And here is that up-tempo style from Caldwell. Good defense by Shivers there. Forced a tough shot, and then Rancy cleared the boards. A mismatch inside. Rancy could not take advantage over Barba Bay. Give Barba Bay credit. Rancy was able to back him down, but then he made the shot difficult. Gave up five inches inside. Barba Bay lost the rock. Evans backs it out as the CU half court offense takes shape. Heber. No good on his attempt from beyond the perimeter. And no one really crashing the offensive glass for Caldwell made for a very easy defensive rebound for Jefferson. Nasaya, this time an air ball. He hit a couple of three-pointers in the first half. 
not there, and he kind of looked up to the heavens after that one went out of bounds. Caldwell has really played well defensively in the first two minutes of this second half. You know, very, very tough shots Jefferson has took in every one of their possessions. Evans, strong to the cup, could not finish, and Barba Bay steers this Jefferson offense. Great hustle by Caldwell, but Barba Bay hit the deck to keep the possession alive. Timko looked like that shot was going to be short, but he gets the friendly bounce. Wow, well, and his first basket of the day, but great hustle play by Barba Bay to keep the possession alive for the Rams. Their first points of the second half. Rancy, too strong. Boy, and you know, with Derek Bueno not on the floor, really no offensive rebounds for Caldwell. Barba Bay looking for Kem King. Puts it up and in. Well, and you know, that's the mark of a really good basketball team. Their early possessions weren't great. They stabilized, get a couple of defensive stops, and then they turn it back on on the offensive end. M. King had eight first half points. He's now in double figures. Rancy spins on Nasaya short. And then a good rebound by Bismarck Nasaya. Caldwell one and done on their offensive trips. Timko driving baseline. Barba Bay, tough shot, no good. Rams up by four, Darnell Evans. That's off Shivers. He's back in there after starting and went to the bench for a long stretch in that first half. And he starts the second half, but that comes off of him. And taking a look at that hustle play, JR. Everyone hitting the floor, but it was Barba Bay for Jefferson who kept it alive and Timko benefited. His first points from the floor. Here is the player of the year. The foul. Well, you know, great players make plays. And Eric Timko, you know, biding his time offensively. Great little hesitation move against Shivers. Gets the contact and one. We get to the first media timeout of the second half. And Jefferson with a six point advantage. 47 41 in favor of Jefferson Timko to the free throw line when we return to Herb McGee Arena. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Back inside Herb McGee Arena, and Jefferson is a 47-41 lead, but neither team has come out of the huddle yet because the officials are at the scores table, partner, checking on if a shot a couple of minutes ago was a two or a three. Want to make sure they get that right, and we get another look here. Well, it doesn't look like anything is changing on the scoreboard, so I would imagine Whatever is looked at has been confirmed, and it is still Jefferson 47-41. Timko at the free throw line. After that baseline lay-in, he was fouled and comes right out of the media timeout and sinks the free throw. Maybe that was what he needed to get going. And if he starts to take over, it could be a problem for Caldwell. They're down seven. The largest lead of the game for Jefferson. And that is a big basket by the redshirt freshman, Kirk Parsons. And Parsons has just been so good this weekend for Caldwell. And you're correct. They needed a basket in a big way. It stays. 
beyond the three-point line. Now Nasaya. Shot clock down to seven. Barba Bay, step back jumper, nothing. As it goes out of bounds, it's back to Caldwell. And here comes Derek Bueno. You know, just under five minutes gone by here in the second half. Caldwell trailing by five, and the big man re-enters the game. Let's see if Caldwell utilizes him right away. One of those energy guys for head coach Dean Johnson. He has been fantastic all weekend for the Cougars. Heber facing a double team. Somehow it gets to Bueno. He's doubled and had the wherewithal to just fire it off Kemkin. Well, the Jefferson defense kind of pinned Derek Bueno on the, uh, on the baseline with really nowhere to go and he had the presence of mind to kind of bank it off Kemkang to keep possession. Darnell Evans, contested jumper. He was fouled and he'll have two attempts. And that's Barba Bay's third. And he uh, just got a little too close and Jimmy Riley's got to make a decision here, and I think he's going to bring Darius Kinnell in for Barba Bay. Evans, perfect shooting stroke at the line. One more attempt. Strong contingent of Caldwell supporters have made the trek from North Jersey. Chiron, the number one squad of the North, aiming for a championship. It's their first time since the 2006-2007 season. They've reached the final, we told you in the first half. A single season program record, 20 wins, the most ever in the NCAA era. That dates back to 2002. Tim Go. Al Nusaya starts that trek towards the basket. Shot clock at six. Bird, no good. Tim King keeps the possession alive. Kinnell. Nusaya draws the blocking foul on Bueno. And that's a good call. Bueno clearly slid in, trying to get the, uh, the charge. And watch him as he slides to his right and uh, gets him with his leg. That's a really good call by the official there. Right there on the baseline. 14-10 left to play. It is 48-45 Jefferson. Is clean up some of that perspiration before this inbounds pass for the Rams. Number one seed in the South. 18 and 11 overall. Messiah, left block, bodied by Rancy. Kinnell in front of the Jefferson bench, trains the three. Well, super inside out basketball, and Bismarck Nasaya with a great kick out pass for Darius Kinnell to hit that three. Bueno lost the basketball briefly, able to pick it back up. Difficult spot underneath. Held ball, possession points in the direction of CU. Well, and watch, watch Nasaya and Kemkang kind of like just totally put like a tent up over uh, Bueno, not allowing him to get the ball to the rim. We're going to have a brief delay as they need to fix the net. The other end, it was stuck on the rim. Creative way to fix it, partner. Use yeah. the other end of the mop. But we are ready to resume as Caldwell, after that held ball, has possession. But now the arrow flips. Darnell Evans off the backboard. It's physical inside. Evans wanted the foul called on the initial attempt, but it finally comes. Well, it's going to get called on Darius Kimmel. And that's a good call as Kimmel, like, kind of took the arm 
of Darnell Evans and brought it down. That's a good call by the official. Cougars down by six. Parsons, Bueno. And a foul again on Jefferson. And all of a sudden, JR, they're beginning to mount for the Rams in the second half. Well, and nice job by Parsons with a little wraparound pass. Nasaya a little slow to get down with the help. And that's Kemp King's third personal foul. And he heads to the bench. 13-21 left to play. But he's only heading to the bench, I believe, for some blood which is taken care of rather quickly on his left forearm area right near the elbow and here he comes with three fouls. Evans clobbered underneath. Well, that's a great backdoor cut by Darnell Evans. He's done that quite a bit tonight and a really good recognition pass by Jarnell Rancy. We're seeing why Evans has been so problematic for opposing defenses. He's not afraid of that contact inside as a guard. He'll go right against the bigs all night long. And he's got a high basketball IQ. He knows if he's overplayed on the wing, his, his instincts say to him, I gotta go back door. The Deer Park, New York native slices into the Jefferson lead. A four-point game as we come down on 13 minutes to play in Philadelphia. A spot in the NCAA tournament is on the line. Kem King, no, flying in. Timko for the putback. That wouldn't fall either. Darnell Evans misfires in transition. And good job by Bismarck Messiah to run the floor and get that defensive rebound. Evans is 19 points to lead all scores this afternoon. Six rebounds and an assist as well. Nasaya, little baby baseline jumper. That's a great individual offensive move by Nasaya. Nice little spin move with a mid-range jumper. Good finish. A three-point lead at the half is now six for Jefferson, but the Rams collect another foul in the second half, and JR, we haven't played eight minutes yet, and that's five fouls on Jefferson. Well, and Caldwell is really aggressively putting pressure on the Rams defensively, forcing them into these situations where they have to commit fouls. Rancy, Darnell Evans, Heber, Bueno, Parsons, the five on the floor, Bueno. That's the third time or so in this second half he's kind of found himself in a tough spot underneath the basket. And Kem Kang clears the boards effectively. Colba limited a lot today to just one offensive attempt at the basket. Kinnell, Messiah, Kem King, Bird, and Timko. Here is Timko. And the foul, Eric Timko for the second time in this second half, absorbing the contact and a chance for a three-point play. And that's Derek Bueno's third personal foul as well. So a lot of bad on that play for Caldwell, but credit Timko. The body control on that cut when the, when the contact hits, able to finish and try to complete the traditional three-point play. What have you seen more of from Timko in the second half? We talked a little bit about what Coach Riley said at the half, wanted Eric to pass the ball more. We've seen Eric driving in the second half and it's leading to opportunities. I think he's just moving. He's constantly moving with without the ball, you know, trying to find, you know, gaps in the defense. And he's also doing a really good job 
of when he does get the ball, if he doesn't have a lane to the basket, he is making a pass right away. So he clearly has heeded his coach's instructions. We got a look moments ago about what's on the line. The CACC tournament trophy. A spot in the NCAA tournament. You can see Caldwell and Jefferson. There are their stickers. Who's gonna get it placed on the ticket? Who is dancing to represent the CACC in the upcoming NCAA tournament? Still a lot to be determined with 11.35 left to play, but Jefferson led by as much as six in the first half. Now they lead by eight in the second half with 11.35 to play. And Timko stepping to the free throw line, aiming to convert his second three-point play of the second half. Entered this weekend top 10 in all of Division II in many offensive categories, including points per game. And he converts the three-point play. And now the Rams have a nine-point cushion. Well, the largest lead of the game. And let's see what Caldwell does here out of, their, uh, out of that media timeout offensively. Bueno. Through the contact, muscles at home. And now it's Caldwell's turn for a three-point play. Well, and you know what? Kem King and Nasaya just kind of got a little bit lazy. And when the ball came off the rim, they didn't, they didn't go secure the rebound, and Derek Bueno did. And that's Kem King's fourth personal foul. And there's a big moment in this game with 11-16 remaining. The big man for Jefferson has to go to the bench. Jefferson leading now by six. Kem King goes to the bench. Remember, yesterday Jefferson launched Timko, Kem King, and Nasaya foul out and still had enough in the tank to beat Bloomfield barely. 80 to 79 in overtime and an instant classic. As Ellis had a three point attempt. It was about 75 to 80% down, but was spit back up and Jefferson finding themselves in the CACC title game. First time since 2019, 2020. They last hoisted the trophy during the 17, 18 season. They beat Caldwell that year in the first round then U Sciences, then Dominican. Bueno. Respect the big man from distance. Wow, six straight points for Derek Bueno to cut the nine point deficit down to three. That is Bueno's first made three pointer of the season. He was 0 out of 10, doesn't shoot it often. How about picking the CACC championship game partner to make your first three-pointer? Well, and he's just playing with so much confidence. And this is a really good timeout, I think, by Jimmy Riley. Not waiting until the media timeout. You know, Caldwell and Derek Bueno scoring six unanswered points to trim that nine-point lead down to three. Recognizing that his team is a little bit out of sorts, and, and especially with Antonin Kempkeng, Picking up his fourth, Coach Riley showing the presence of mind, I think, to call the timeout and settle his troops. It's funny, our crew just showed the replay. It almost looked like Dean Johnson, the head coach, was saying no as Bueno was readying to take that three. But the big man drains it and pulls Caldwell to within three with 10-14 to play. And so once again, punch counter punch all afternoon between these two conference heavyweights. And that's a great way to put it. You know, like, whenever a team has gone on that little bit of a run, the other one has responded. And now you see it's, you know, the ball is in Jefferson's court, so to speak. They've got to respond as Caldwell has done a good job. And go ahead, Jerry. Now jumped up on us with the timeout. Just a couple quick things. Jimmy Riley telling his team coming out of halftime. This is our game, just keep the energy up. For Caldwell, coach doesn't want them to settle for jump shots, that's another thing, but he pointed right at Kirk Parsons and said, you are doing a great job on Eric Timko. 
I'll have some more for you next time out. Thanks so much, Jerry. Hard working, Jerry Milani, all weekend long. What a crew that has been assembled here. City of brotherly love, what a weekend it has been. Earlier today, Dominican on the women's side, winning their second championship in the last couple of seasons. They won it in the spring of 2021. They beat Post today by nine. Rancy! brings the Cougars to within one. Well, and just really good isolation for Rancy at the free throw line, put it on the deck, goes by Barba Bay for the bucket. A one point game with under 10 to play in the second half of the 2023 men's basketball championship game. Nesaya had it knocked away and it stays with Jefferson, which is nine on the shot clock. And, you know, we're in the midst of an 8-0 run here for Caldwell, trimming that nine-point deficit down to one. Bueno paddled that one into the backcourt, but Evans beat into it by Kinnell. Hoists up the long three. No, the rebound is Bueno's. And Caldwell with an opportunity to take the lead back with a field goal. Parsons. Tough shot, it's pinballing around and Barba Bay of Jefferson finally collecting. That's a great call as Nasaya was definitely not set, setting that screen and that is his third personal foul. You almost could see it coming as he was running around Rancy and he didn't, he definitely didn't get set and Timko probably could have waited another second to allow uh, Nasaya to get there to set that screen. Can you remember a CACC weekend where every game has come down to the wire? Uh, it, it's, it's amazing that all of these games have been this close. The parity in the league. We talked about it last night. Off the turnover. Dangerous pass. Stays with Jefferson. Now, oh, Dean Johnson <laughs> imploring the official to make that call. Uh, it clearly went off Darnell Evans, but Dean is living and dying with every possession. Kittle. Now Bird. This deliberate look for Jefferson. Bird connecting. Big time three pointer for number three. I tell you what, Hakeem Bird, what a game he's had today on the offensive end and just drained a humongous three point shot. Bueno could not get it to go. They look for Timko. Kinnell, near corner. Misses the three. And once Heaver went to the ground, I think that's when you saw the official call the foul. And I think that's Barbara Bay's number fourth and it, number four, and it is. And Jason Shields is gonna come in the game for him, but that's gonna take us to our under eight media as, you know, Jefferson, uh, just like yesterday, getting into some serious foul trouble as this second half progresses. Barba Bay with four, Kem King with four, and with 7.54 left to play. Jefferson has a four point lead over Caldwell and Jerry Milani is once again standing by. Jerry? Thanks guys, in the huddle for Coach Jimmy and his big feature, his big thing he was talking to the guys about, he asked them, each of them five sitting down, what happens when the ball goes side to side? And the guys in unison said, anything we want, coach. So look for that, something that the guys are going to try to do. And in this last little spurt right here, Caldwell's hustle, you saw that. And that's something the coach was really, the coach Johnson really wanted to import to his guys is this is our game also. It's both teams going at it as hard as they can, hustling as much as they can. No one knows who's going to win, guys. Thanks so much, Jerry. Four point game, 754 left to play.
Well, and Mark Heber will go to the free throw line coming out of this media timeout to shoot one and one. And you look up at the scoreboard, Jefferson with 18 fouls and Caldwell with only three. You know, that, that's interesting now. Anytime that Caldwell gets fouled from here on in, they're going to the free throw line. And the third team all-conference performer, Mark Heber, goes to the free throw line. Heber has been held to just six points today. Sophomore out of Patterson hits the front end. Darnell Evans, 19 points to lead Caldwell. Derek Bueno has 12 points and five rebounds for Jefferson. Bird and Timko have 14. Kemting has 10. And the Cougars scratching and clawing their way once again to within a single possession. Shields, pump fakes, and then is blocked by Renzi. Bueno. The championship is tied, and it's recognition. Recognition by Derek Bueno, and it forces Jimmy Riley to bring Kem Kang back into the game as he's going to check in. Great job by Derek Bueno. Tim Coe, no good on his three-point attempt. Darnell Evans flying into the front court. Rancy, size mismatch on Shields. Bueno. Puts Caldwell in front. Wow, uh, what a great job again by Bueno. And recognizing the mismatch of Shields on Rancy allowed for Bueno to be open because everybody went to help Jason Shields. And Caldwell has surged ahead. Timko through traffic draws contact. Boy, you know, he was so, like, patient in setting up that drive. Hesitate, hesitate, explode, hesitate, and then goes finally. It's gonna be Evans who's gonna get that foul. That is three on Darnell. And now Timko at the free throw line. Sophomore can tie this game up. As you talked, partner, Kem King comes back in. Jefferson trying to pick their spots with some of their players in foul trouble in a game that is deadlocked at 61. Spot in the NCAA tournament on the line. The automatic bid goes to the winner. Bueno hit a shot from distance in this half, but does not pull the trigger. Parsons, Bueno. Misfires from deep and a foul against Caldwell. Well, and you know, just like that, in the span of 30 seconds, Caldwell picks up a couple of fouls and they inch closer to going over the limit. Now, good job defensively that trip by the Rams, forcing a tough shot. Timko. Evans nearly picked up a foul there and a kicked ball keeps the possession with Jefferson. Now that entry pass by Darius Kinnell, I mean, it's, it is a kick, but it was almost just really good defense there by Evans. Could not have asked for a better way to end your Sunday as Heber nearly went into the stands trying to save that. A sophomore. 
The second leading scorer for Caldwell a season ago is right there again this year. Tim Cohn with three on the shot clock. No good off the side of the rim. Heber. Contact underneath, no call. Tim Cohn, contested three. Messiah puts Jefferson back in front. End-to-end -end action. Now, quick threes by both teams. The difference, Jefferson was able to get an offensive rebound. Kinnell. This time, Evans pulls down the rebound for Caldwell. And he goes soaring to draw the foul against Jefferson's Darius Kinnell. Well, Darnell Evans is just so explosive in the open court. Look at him. You can just see him sizing Darius Kinnell up, knowing he's going to go strong to the hole. And Kinnell just getting in the way, committing the foul. And I know I exaggerate a little bit, but with how fast he is, and he takes such giant steps, looks like he covers the floor in three or four steps. You Watch him get the rebound, and next thing you know, he's at the other end of the floor getting fouled. Evans with one more attempt. And he left it short. So Jefferson stays in front with four and a half minutes remaining in regulation of the men's basketball tournament final. Number one in the North Caldwell. Number one in the South, Jefferson. And the Rams. Turn it over. Well, an ill-advised pass that just couldn't have been handled inside, and the ball goes out of bounds, and it gives Caldwell an opportunity to retake the lead. This will probably be the last possession, you know, before the under four media timeout. Just 10 turnovers for Jefferson, only six for Caldwell in a well-played championship game. Rancy going right at Nasaya, lost the ball off his knee and out of bounds. Right at the four minute mark. Well, and really good defense here by Nasaya. And you see him just able to move with Rancy enough, the ball goes out of bounds, and our last media timeout. With Jefferson holding on to a one-point lead of the CACC Digital Network powered by BTV. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. A one-point game with four minutes to play. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Herb McGee Arena inside the Gallagher Center, the site of the 2023 men's and women's basketball semifinals and championship. On the women's side, Dominican. They won it in the spring of 2021. They won it again earlier this afternoon. A nine-point victory for Bill Diener's club. The second seed of the North beating the top seed post. Tim Coe, another chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. The player of the year making it happen for Jefferson down the stretch. Man, he just set that up so well. Pass to Kittle, backdoor cut. Parsons, a little too much contact and Timko 
with the end one, and he, you know, misses a free throw. Rare to see from Eric. Top five in the league in free throws. Couple of points below 90%. Bueno continues his strong weekend in Philadelphia. And Kem Kang, you know, has to be careful with the, with the four fouls. Really didn't guard him as closely as he normally would. Tim Kim with the ball in his hands. Off the screen. Kinnell. An air ball, saved for Timko, his three. Just a glancing blow off the front of the cup, and now the Cougars with a chance. The lob inside, Bueno, all in one motion, puts it in, Cougars in front. And the old alley-oop to the big man, and another lead change today. A no-look find from Darnell Evans. 2.35 to play. Caldwell with a one-point lead. Kem King, no good. Evans hits Heber. Thought about that three. And the fan section behind him were all rising in unison, but he does not take the triple. Now the ball needs to go into Derek Bueno. Evans hits the deck. And a foul against Jefferson. And you see Dean Johnson talking to Bueno right there. You know, he kind of like took that possession off and the Cougars get bailed out a little bit as Bird and Nasaya collapse and Bird's gonna pick up that personal foul. And Darnell Evans, who entered the day, 72% free throw shooter sinks the first. One more for the CACC Rookie of the Year. Two point Caldwell lead. It will stay one possession. Whether he makes it or misses it. Three point Caldwell lead, two and change to play. As they said at halftime, fasten those seatbelts. One heck of a wild ride this weekend. Deflected ball taken by Evans. Great recovery by Jefferson though, so Evans pulls it back out. And you know what? What a great decision by Evans. Not forcing, looking to bleed some clock. Keeper into a double team in a very tough spot on the floor and he's forced to call a timeout. Well, a big turnover as Darnell Evans with the steal didn't force and the Cougars running some clock here. Look at the alley-oop to Mr. Bueno who has been Mr. Everything for the Cougars this weekend. The sophomore from Palisades Park, Roselle Catholic High School, has really been the guy for the Cougars this weekend. And the school from New Jersey beginning to smell and taste a conference championship. Aiming for their first CACC championship since 2006, 2007. That year, they beat Goldie Beacom, they beat number one Philadelphia, and they beat U Sciences to hoist the trophy. Now they're trying to hoist it this season by knocking off Wilmington, Chestnut Hill, and Jefferson. Two thirds of the way there. Evans, no good. That would have been a three. Big miss and an opportunity for Jefferson. Barba Bay. Kem King matched up against Bueno. Shot clock 
down to five. Near center court, Messiah went over and back. A turnover. Well, I, 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 I think that they're gonna, they're gonna move this ball up front. Let's see if Messiah went back court. He sure did. He sure did. That's a really good call. That is a really good call by the official as Nasaya's right foot stepped back on the half court stripe. Official was right there making the call. With 59.7 seconds remaining in the championship game, Caldwell in possession, leading by three. And Caldwell has gotten stops on the last three possessions by Jefferson and turnovers in each of them. Heber, too strong. Great close out by Nesaya. Timko for Barba Bay. No good, underneath Bueno. Harassed and a foul. Wow, and Barba Bay had a great look and Timko almost got the tie up and the possession arrow is with Jefferson. Look at that, that almost goes down, but watch it right here, trying, trying really hard to get the tie up, not able to, and guess who's gonna go to the line to try to extend the lead for Caldwell? Derek Bueno, he's been the big time contributor for Caldwell all weekend long. 28.8 seconds remaining. It was Jefferson that took the timeout. You can see underneath their nameplate, they have just one remaining. Caldwell has two. Still an eternity left. In basketball, 28.8 seconds can sometimes take 15 minutes. We'll see if Caldwell can knock down their free throws as a club. Caldwell, very good at the line. They are 74% as a team. And Bueno is an 80% free throw shooter. So he goes to the line here. Caldwell has missed just two free throws all afternoon. Bueno, with Caldwell in the bonus, has two attempts. And he makes the first to increase the lead to four. Bueno, before this attempt, told his teammates to get off the line, clear out, play defense. He's alone. And number 21 in white, subs out of this game right now to protect him for the fouls, with his club leading by five. See how Jefferson plays it. Would you go for a three here or a quick two, Parker? Uh, I, I get the, the best shot. If it's a two, it's a two. Timko for Barba Bay. Pretty good look from three, and Barba Bay connects. Heber in trouble. Wow. He's fouled. Wow. Almost got a tie up, almost got a turnover. Wow. Barba Bay, ice water in his veins, knocking down a big three ball. And uh, Mike Andrewson, you wanted a timeout there after that three, right? But they only have one remaining, and that's probably why Coach Riley didn't call the timeout. But look at this, they almost get a turnover. Heber is a 93% free throw shooter. He missed the first. And there it is. Now you gotta be sure. Well, uh, Caldwell's not gonna have anybody on the lane. You gotta be sure on the miss here. I've got the rebound, but nobody on the lane for Caldwell. The second attempt is good. It pushes the game to three. Is it again best shot available, JR? Now no, I'm looking for a three now. 10 seconds to go. Three point game. Barba Bay! Not in the act of not shooting. Not in the act of shooting, and he's going to go to the line for one and one. Wow. Holy cow. Right before. Let's see. Let's see if he got it. Yeah, you know what? That's a good call. 
I think, I think Evans is pulling on his jersey before he gets up. I think it's a good call. And if, and if Coach Johnson was telling them the foul, good play. A lot of time still left, though. Barber Bay got to knock both of these down, and then you got to look to, you know, try to double and foul right away. Three-point game as Barber Bay steps to the free throw line. One and one, and the sophomore with a perfect first attempt. Barba Bay, a 57% free throw shooter, made the first. Missed the second, Rancy the rebound, and he gets the timeout call oh, before wow. Jefferson is able to foul the big man. And that's big, that free throw miss, because now if you get the ball inbounds and you make two free throws, it's a two possession game. Big free throw miss by Ahmad Barber Bay. And a couple of key free throw misses. Heber, a 93% free throw shooter. That's right at the top of the CACC. He missed one. Left the door slightly open for Jefferson as we get a look. Both teams have been solid from the line all afternoon. But Barba Bay missing that free throw attempt. All right, JR, 7.3 seconds to play. Really no time to play any defense, right? You got a foul immediately? Yeah, I, I think you sell out, try to get the five second call out of bounds. If you don't get it, you have to give the foul immediately. And if you're called well, you really have to make sure that you do a good job of that first pass. Make it a, make it a pass that your player can catch. Don't make it a, a, a difficult catch. And remember now, being that the second free throw was missed, he can't run the baseline. The player is stationary on the baseline. What a finish, partner. That's a great point what? about not being able to run on the baseline. Bueno is the inbounder. Cosby Napoleon, the six foot three freshman, checks in for Jefferson. The inbounds pass comes to Evans, and he is grabbed almost immediately. And so now Darnell, the CACC Rookie of the Year and a 72% free throw shooter who's attempted more than 200 free throws this season, goes to the line for the biggest attempts of his young career. You know, when Barbara Bay went to the free throw line, there was nine seconds left between the miss and then the foul here, almost four seconds have come off the clock. A lot of time really went off the clock. And this is, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is the game right here. If he makes this free throw, it's pretty much over. Evans to make it a four-point game late in Philadelphia. He missed it! Jefferson has to go! Three seconds to play! Barba Bay! Oh, there was a timeout. Took an attempt that wouldn't have mattered. A timeout was taken. Now, I think they gotta look and see about the clock. They gotta look at the clock now and see if they're gonna add any time to this uh, after, after the timeout. And they probably should look at the monitor. The other question is, where was the ball? Where was the ball when the, when the timeout got called? It'll probably be on the right sideline, not quite at uh, uh, foul line extended, just a little bit before that. And the officials are really looking to see if, if any time should be added here. Jerry, any, anything down there? Well, I mean, we're, we we don't have Jerry right now, but but you can see there's at least one, at least 1.9 1 will probably be put on the clock. Jerry's saying 2, 2.6, 2.6 is gonna go on the clock. So 2.6 seconds to go. Great job by the truck. They had it ready to go on replay, 2.6. Very quickly, did you like the timeout call down? Yeah. 
I actually, I, I think I, I, if I were the, the Rams, I would have, you know, quickly advanced it to half court and called it so that I would have had like maybe three or four seconds. But like I said, four seconds went off the clock from when Barber Bay took his second free throw to when Evans got fouled. Those are four vital seconds. Here we go, Jefferson needs a three. Timko for the tie, no good! It's Caldwell's turn to shine! The Cougars on top of the CACC for the first time since the 2006-2007 season in Philadelphia. They knock off the top seed in the South. 72 to 69. And give Rancy a lot of credit to be right there with Eric Timko not fouling, just putting his hands up, making that shot as difficult as possible. But what a game and what a season for the Cougars and they march on. That's a pretty good look for Jefferson with the player of the year getting a chance could not have asked for a better shot. Yeah, I mean, to get Timko the ball with a look, you're right, partner, about as good as they could have wanted for, and you see it, but I but I still say, look at Rancy, right there, the, the best Caldwell defender, standing right in front of Eric Timko, putting his hands up, making that shot as difficult as it could be. So the best season in the NCAA era for Caldwell continues, they are. The 2022-2023 CACC Tournament Champions. They entered the day with a single season program record, 20 wins. Give them their 21st and their biggest win of the season. And Jerry Milani is pulling the freshman sensation Darnell Evans out of the huddle. Jerry? You hear the chants behind me, MVP, MVP, Darnell Evans, the star of the season for Caldwell, the star of this game, but you got a lot of supporting cast. Yes, yes, I'm nothing without my teammates. It's all on them. They push me every day in practice, in the game. They tell me to keep going. It's all, give all the praise to them. It's a seven-point lead, turned into a deficit, turned into a bigger deficit. How'd you guys come back? Man, we just stuck with the game plan, intensity on defense, get out on the break, share the ball with each other, and look what happens. What's next? You excited for next week? Oh yeah, we're excited, but we got to celebrate right now first. We'll get back to that when we get back home later. We're gonna celebrate right now. Back to you guys, we'll be back in a little bit with Coach. Thanks so much, Jerry. Let's get your thoughts quickly, JR, about what was a wild weekend in Philadelphia, one of the best CACC tournaments we can remember. Well, I mean, just tremendous games. Coaches pushing right buttons, kids making big plays, and it all coming down to arguably, you know, the best player in the CACC, shooting the ball over the best defensive player in the CACC. I mean, could you ask for anything better in the last second of a championship game down three? Incredible that we got to that moment. Caldwell pulls it out, 72 to 69. The Cougars are 21 and nine, Jefferson 18 and 12, and Next, we would like to honor you, you touched on it, JR. Rancy being able to find Timko there and not lose sight of where the ball was going. That was a big play by Caldwell. And to not foul, to do everything there but not foul him in the act of shooting the three, to put his arm straight up, to jump, to make that shot as difficult as possible. But if you look at that shot, it was right in the middle, it was just short. I mean, but Andrew, all game, Eric Timko's shots were short. And that's a credit to the Caldwell defense. Timko finishes, I believe, with 18 points, but they were the most quiet 18 that he's probably had all year. The Caldwell defense, physical all day, but credit Jefferson for trying to get those other players to, to will their team to get the championship. But at the end of the day, Darnell Evans and company, and hey, we can't say enough about the, the young man walking to the table. 
Derek Bueno, this was like a coming out party for this young man. What a weekend for Derek Bueno. He almost got lost in the shuffle during this Caldwell season because of the play of Rancy and Darnell Evans and Heber, but Bueno made a name for himself and then some with his performances yesterday and today. Oh, there's no question. He was amazing this weekend, scored when he wanted to score, defended the opposition's big players effectively well, rebounded the basketball. Terrific weekend. And he just was rewarded with the MVP of this tournament, and I think it's a spot on call by the committee to do so. Bueno was the difference this weekend for the Cougars. Serenaded with the MVP chance from the Caldwell student Next, section. Like a great the look at them. They were out in full force, making the track from North Jersey. Cougars, and Caldwell wins their first CACC tournament championship since the 06-07 season. First year head coach, Dean Johnson as the Cougars back in the NCAA tournament. We will hear from him momentarily with Jerry Milani. Dominican wins it on the women's side, a hard-earned victory over Post, and Caldwell beats Jefferson in Jefferson's own building, 72-69, to cap off a tremendous weekend of basketball on the men's and women's side. Can't say that enough. Yesterday, we had a couple of overtime games. The women's game was a final by nine, but you were on the call for that, and you know that with, what, three minutes left, it was a one-possession game. Uh, you know, both games today, classic games, and to the victor goes the spoils. And, you know, I'm, I'm at a loss for words, but, I mean, I, I'm just so happy for Dean Johnson and, and uh, Joe Scott and Eddie Ryan and, and what and what they Johnson. did this year, how difficult it is. You know, Mark Carino has been Caldwell basketball for such a long time. It's not easy, you know, to, to replace him and what he has meant to that program. Now, but those three guys have been there, you know, with Mark for so long and knowing Mark the way I do, he's thrilled right now. That, that his guy, Dean Johnson, has led this team to a championship, and you see Mark Carino right there. Mark is an, an extremely emotional guy, and I'm sure inside he's, he's running with emotions, and it, it's, it's a proud moment for that program and for him as the director of athletics for Caldwell. Dean Johnson spending 30 plus seasons on Coach Carino's staff as an assistant coach and in his first year in charge. He helps Caldwell to the CACC Men's Basketball Tournament Championship. The Cougars securing the CACC's automatic bid. And Dean Johnson will join Jerry Milani shortly to talk about what was an instant classic between two heavyweights. Number one in the North Caldwell, number one in the South Jefferson. My name is Jason Hinchcliffe. Thank you for attending. And it's Caldwell that comes out on top, 72 to 69, to celebrate their first championship since 2006, 2007. And Jerry Milani, right in the middle of things, has pulled Dean Johnson away. He was embracing Mark Carino. Now. He is getting sent to chat with our man down on the floor, Jerry Milani. And Jerry, we turn it over to you with head coach, Dean Johnson. Coach, put into words the emotion of what it's meant to lead this team in your first year as a coach. Well, it's nice, but it's all about them. So you can see the, the joy on their face and, 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 and how hard they worked. And, you know, you know I think you're going to take you out here. You're the first number one seed to ever be the host team on their home floor. Past and all that stuff. So that's you know that's important. But um, these kids, you, 
you saw it yesterday, Joe. You see us all. We give up. Uh, they fight through it all. I mean, Jefferson, Jimmy, Jimmy does a great. Jefferson does a great job. Jimmy does a great job. And you know, they're a hell of a basketball team. And they, when you can make shots, it puts pressure. On them. But I'll tell you what, these kids can defend. I mean, we we can score the basketball, but we can defend. So I'm happy for my staff, or Coach Scott and Coach Ryan, because they work so hard. And these kids, it, it's all about them. You know. Um, I've been here before, so I've seen it, but with this special group of kids, I guess being the head coach. Is And, and he had him up at our place. And then in the last 10 minutes of the game, we, we started to put Jarnell on just to give him, to, because he's a heck of a player. And we talked about it three or four times inside 10 minutes. I said, should we put Jarnell back on him and get, and get a little bit of a match uh, for, for Kem Keg and, and, and Bay and those kids. But my, my, my assistant coaches, Joe and, and Eddie, said, no, it's Kirk's basically said, you know, he, he's defending a little daylight. And, and we did. I mean, we started the field, but I, I thought Kirk put him under pressure. But I thought that when we went, it, we were in our white defense when we hedge. So we were switching. So in the last four minutes, we had the people on Tim Coe, too. But that's a heck of a kid. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so glad we have him. Great point game, close game yesterday. How important has it been that you've played in so many close games throughout the season to be in this one? I, I think that matters. You know, I think it matters. I mean, Anytime as a program and as a, as a head coach, you try to test the kids day in and day out. Um, we want to get to a point in this program where we're here, uh, like I said yesterday, on a regular basis, but maybe you don't have to win it because you've, you've beaten the teams on our schedule so you can get an at-large bid. Um, so can, you can continue to go to be one of the 64. But this was an exciting weekend. Jefferson did a great job. Uh, the hotel took care of us. I think these kids had a great experience. You know, Mark, Mark was here, uh, vice president, assistant vice president. You know, the whole softball team is here because now I don't get to go to Florida with them, so they're, they're the happiest team in America right now. <laughs> but you get to rent a bus this week. Yeah, we're going to find out whether we're going to Waltham, Mass, or uh, I guess it might be Manchester. So the rumor has it it's Bentley or St. A's, and I would probably bet that they'll probably slide us in the eighth seed, and we'll probably draw one of them. But we're still playing, so wash uniforms, get on bus, and wherever they send us, we'll play. Coach, congratulations. The 2000. so much, Jerry. JR, you just heard from Dean Johnson. Your final thoughts before we send it to our guys in the studio. Well, as I said, I, I couldn't be any prouder for and happier for Dean. Um, it, it, it wasn't and, and isn't an easy situation, just like for Jimmy Riley. You know, both of these guys should be commended for what they, they did this year with both of their teams, getting them, you know, through the marathon of the season and getting them to this point. And uh, just a tremendous basketball game. Two good, uh, two good teams. And Caldwell uh, gets to get on, like he said, gets to go on a bus and uh, play, uh, play again. And that, and that's great. And you know, just want to say it was, it's awesome working with you. Uh, awesome to be uh, around Tim and Mike. You know, for everything that they did and everybody here at, at Jefferson and uh, and our friends at BTV. Just. Uh, I, I said it to family before I left to come down here this weekend. This is arguably the greatest time of the year. This uh, this weekend, I've been for this is the 19th year that I've broadcast this tournament, and it gets better and better. And I look forward to it every year. Well said, partner. And before we send it to the studio, just have to talk a little bit about the BTV crew. Every year, a tremendous production in partnership with the CACC, and we thank. Jeff Fowler, John Luck, Mary Evers, Patrick Evers, Mark Dean, Mike Moriello, Paul Holmes, Scott Olson, Jason Pritchard, Dominic Damiano, Mike the Postman Simmons, Nick Allende, Matt Mad Dog Nelson, our super fans, Dick Fowler and Peter Murray, the CACC led by Commissioner Dan Mara, Doug DeBias, Allison McDonald, Stephanie, JR, it's been a pleasure working with you. Jerry Milani down on the floor was play-by-play -play on the women's side. I'm Andrew Byrne, and for the final time, we send it over to Mike Andrewson and Tim Jimenez. And guys, it has been so fun spending the last couple of days with you calling some great games. It's
It's been an absolute pleasure, Andrew, JR, terrific job. And we just saw uh, Coach Johnson there cutting down the net. And there it is. They're going on. Caldwell moving on to the NCAA tournament. They are your CACC champions. Uh, everything has already been said. It's Coach Johnson, our guys play defense. Kirk Parsons has had a defensive assignments all year. There are so many positives on that team. Derek Bueno, what a weekend. 17 points and 22 today is our MVP. Uh, Roselle Catholic, I'm sure Coach Dave Boff hopefully was watching and you know, one of their products is out here making it making it happen at the next level. It, it's great to see. It's great to see. An earned championship for the Cougars here, the first uh, since the 2006-07 campaign. Derek Bueno, you mentioned he is the MVP of the tournament. 16 second half points, 22 overall. Uh, that <laughs> second half, he was just incredible. Hit that three-point shot. Yes. Woo. It's Both teams, you know, from the free throw line, played great tonight. 16 of 20 for Caldwell, 15 of 18 for Jefferson. Yep. But down the stretch, you know, Heber, Missed the front end of two. You know, Barber Bay missed the back end of two. Evans missed the back end of two. It's, it makes it kind of tough. And you get a great finish like that. What? Who would have thought we would have got a finish like that after these games that we saw? You know, we, I made a mention to you, a one-point game with four minutes to go. Would you take it? Absolutely. You know what? We got a great finish. We got six unbelievable games this weekend. Oh, yeah, exactly. Some of the best basketball you'll see. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so a tremendous performance. So earlier, the Dominican Chargers have won the CACC Women's Championship over Post, the 63-54 victory. Caldwell, as we just saw, won the CACC Men's Championship with a 72-69 victory. Partner, it's been a oh, great time. We have so many people to thank for this weekend. Tons of you, people you to thank. You start your list, then I'll get into my <laughs> list. Entire team here, uh, <laughs> and uh, Andrew mentioned the BTV team, of course. Uh, incredible broadcast. The entire team here at Jefferson University. Athletic Director, Women's Basketball Coach Tom Shirley. The Associate Director of Athletics, Rosie Kelly. The Sports Information Director, Rob Cunningham. Rob Nelson here with the uh, Recreation Facilities, along with uh, Zach Pacurello. Uh, anybody else? So, the Facilities Group that kept everybody fed in the Courtesy Lounge. You know, hats off. The support of this facility has been terrific. Uh, there are so many good people that are here. Everybody's very friendly. Everybody's, hi, how you doing? You walk in, you feel welcomed. And JR hit it on the head. You know, this tournament just keeps getting better and better with the presence of BTV and the amount of cameras, the amount of support, the quality staff that they have, the professionals on hand just makes it all run through very seamless. All right, good luck to Dominican, good luck to Caldwell for the women and the men in, the, in your next step of your journey. Yes. This is March. It has been madness so far, and the madness will continue for those two programs. So Mike Andreessen for the entire team, uh, Tim Jimenez here. Uh, this has been the CACC Network, the CACC Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, powered by BTV.